Greetings, fellow seekers of ancient wisdom. I am Cleo, the muse of history and storytelling, here to guide you into the wondrous realm of the Olympian gods and goddesses. The Olympians are a group of powerful and revered beings in Greek mythology. They are called the Olympians because they make their majestic abode on Mount Olympus, a towering peak that reaches the heavens. Imagine it as a celestial palace where these divine beings reside and rule. These extraordinary beings are not just ordinary gods and goddesses. They are the embodiment of the highest ideals and forces in the universe. Each Olympian possesses their own unique domain and special abilities, like love, war, wisdom, and more. They are the living personifications of these concepts. But what sets the Olympians apart is their connection to mortals. They interact with humans, shaping the world and influencing the lives of ordinary people. Their stories, filled with epic battles, grand quests, and profound lessons, have been passed down through generations. Through their triumphs and challenges, the Olympians teach us about bravery, justice, and the complex nature of humanity. They show us the boundless potential of the human spirit and the intricate tapestry of existence itself. Join me on this extraordinary journey as we explore the fascinating myths and legends of the Olympian gods and goddesses. We will uncover the depths of their powers, the complexities of their relationships, and the impact they have on the mortal realm. Let the journey to Olympus begin. Ah, Zeus, king of the gods, lord of the sky and thunder. When you think of Greek mythology, Zeus is likely one of the first figures to come to mind. But who is Zeus, really? Let's take a closer look. Zeus is the son of Cronus and Rhea, and the youngest of the first generation of Olympian gods. He is often depicted with a lightning bolt in his hand, ready to strike down his enemies. But Zeus was also known for his power and his many affairs with mortal women, which often resulted in the birth of demigods and heroes. Zeus presided over the affairs of the gods and was often called upon to settle disputes between them. He ruled from his throne on Mount Olympus, surrounded by his fellow Olympians, including his wife and sister, Hera. But Zeus was not always benevolent. He was known to be vengeful and could be wrathful when his will was not obeyed. He was a powerful god, and his domain over the sky and thunder was a reminder of his supreme power. Zeus was a complex figure, both feared and revered by the ancient Greeks. His influence can still be felt in modern times, as his name is often used to describe powerful men and leaders. So there you have it, Zeus, king of the gods, a figure whose power and legacy have endured for centuries. Join us next time for another exciting episode of Two Minute Mythology. Welcome back to Two Minute Mythology, where we dive into the fascinating stories and legends of cultures around the world. Today, we're going to talk about a god who rules over one of the most powerful forces on Earth, the sea. I'm Cleo, the muse of history and storytelling, and I'll be your guide as we explore the mighty Poseidon. Poseidon is one of the Olympian gods, the most powerful deities in ancient Greek mythology. He's the brother of Zeus and Hades, and he's the god of the sea, earthquakes, and horses. You might think that's an odd combination, but it makes perfect sense when you understand the mythological stories behind each one. According to the myths, Poseidon was responsible for causing earthquakes because he was the god of the sea, and the sea and the earth are intimately connected. He could also calm the sea with just a flick of his trident, or cause a storm with a single angry wave. But Poseidon wasn't just the god of the sea. He was also the god of horses, and he was said to have created the first horse out of sea foam. And his association with horses wasn't just limited to their creation. Poseidon was known to be fiercely protective of horses, and he was the patron god of horse races and chariot racing. Despite his power, Poseidon wasn't always a friendly god. In fact, he was known to be quite temperamental and quick to anger. In one story, he flooded an entire city just because the king insulted him. 
But Poseidon was also known to be a generous god, and he had many famous children, including the hero Theseus, who defeated the Minotaur in the labyrinth, and the sea goddess Amphitrite, who became his wife. So, that's a brief introduction to the mighty Poseidon, the god of the sea, earthquakes, and horses. Who do you want to learn about next? Leave a comment below and let us know, and we'll see you next time. Welcome back to Two Minute Mythology. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most powerful goddesses of all time, Hera, Queen of the Gods. Hera was the goddess of marriage, family, and childbirth, and she was fiercely protective of her domain. She was the wife of Zeus, king of the gods, and she demanded respect and loyalty from everyone around her. But let's face it, Hera didn't always have an easy time with her husband. Zeus was known for his infidelity, and Hera wasn't one to take that lightly. She often punished Zeus's mistresses and their children, earning a reputation for being vengeful and ruthless. Despite her sometimes harsh ways, Hera was also a goddess of great beauty and grace. She was often depicted with a crown of gold and a scepter, and she had a special affinity for peacocks. In fact, it's said that her chariot was pulled by peacocks. One of Hera's greatest joys was in protecting women during childbirth. She was there to guide and assist, ensuring that new mothers and their babies were safe and healthy. But above all, Hera was a fiercely protective mother and wife. She loved her family more than anything in the world, and she would do anything to keep them safe. And in the end, that's what made her one of the most powerful and respected goddesses of all time. That's all for now. Who do you want to learn about next? Leave a comment below and let us know, and we'll see you next time on Two Minute Mythology. Welcome back to Two Minute Mythology. Today, we're diving into the realm of Apollo, the Greek god of light, music, and prophecy. I'm Cleo, the muse of history and storytelling, and I'll be your guide through the incredible tales of Apollo. Prepare to be enchanted by his captivating stories. Apollo was born on the island of Delos, gifted with radiant beauty and extraordinary talents. He was known for his skills in archery, music, and poetry. But Apollo was more than just a talented deity. He held great significance in the realm of prophecy. Apollo was closely associated with the Oracle of Delphi, a revered priestess who would channel his prophecies to those seeking guidance. People from far and wide would journey to Delphi, seeking Apollo's wisdom and insight into their future. Apollo's stories are filled with captivating adventures. From his role in slaying the fearsome python to his musical contest with the satyr Marcias, Apollo's presence loomed large in the ancient Greek world. Apollo's music was said to be incredibly powerful, capable of healing the sick and soothing troubled souls. His lyre echoed with divine melodies that brought joy and harmony to all who heard it. As the god of light, Apollo's radiance illuminated the world. He drove his golden chariot across the sky, bringing light and warmth to all living beings. Apollo's tales are a testament to the power of creativity, prophecy, and enlightenment. Join us on this mythological journey as we explore the rich tapestry of Apollo's adventures, who will you choose to learn about next? Leave a comment and let us know. And don't forget to subscribe for daily mythological adventures on Two Minute Mythology. See you next time. Greetings, friends. Today, I want to tell you about a goddess who was responsible for one of the most important aspects of life on Earth. Her name was Demeter, and she was the goddess of agriculture and the harvest. Demeter was the sister of Zeus and Poseidon, but she was most well-known for her role in providing food and nourishment for mortals. She was often depicted holding a bundle of wheat or other crops, and was worshipped by farmers and anyone who relied on the land for survival. Demeter was also responsible for the changing of the seasons, and it was said that her grief at the loss of her daughter, Persephone, was the reason for winter. When Persephone was taken to the underworld by Hades, Demeter was so heartbroken that she refused to let any crops grow. It was only when Persephone returned to her that she allowed the world to bloom once again. 
Demeter's devotion to her daughter was legendary, and it was said that she would do anything to protect her. Her love for Persephone was the reason why she was willing to go to such lengths to ensure that the world was fertile and fruitful. And that's the story of Demeter, the goddess of agriculture and the harvest. Without her, life on Earth would be much harder. Join me next time as we explore the myths and legends of another Greek god or goddess. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for new videos every day at noon EST. And as always, let me know in the comments who you want to hear about next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Welcome back to Two Minute Mythology, where we explore the enchanting tales of gods and goddesses. I'm Cleo, the muse of history and storytelling, and today we'll be delving into the captivating world of Athena, the goddess of wisdom. Athena, born from the head of Zeus, embodies the essence of wisdom, intellect, and strategic warfare. She's known for her keen intelligence, unwavering courage, and her close association with the city of Athens. Athena is often depicted with her trusted companions, the wise owl and the olive tree, symbols of knowledge and peace. She also carries the mighty Aegis, a shield adorned with the fearsome face of Medusa. One of the most famous tales involving Athena is her encounter with the talented weaver Arachne. Their rivalry led to a weaving contest, and Athena, in her wisdom, transformed Arachne into a spider as a lesson in humility. Athena is not only the goddess of wisdom, but also of craftsmanship, strategy, and the protector of heroes. She guided and assisted numerous legendary figures, including Odysseus and Perseus. Throughout ancient Greece, grand temples were built in her honor, adorned with magnificent sculptures and artwork that showcased her divine presence. Athena's influence extends far beyond the realm of gods and goddesses. She embodies the power of wisdom, encouraging us to think critically, seek knowledge, and make just decisions. Who would you like to learn about next? Leave a comment below and let us know. And remember, we upload a new video every day, so make sure to subscribe to our channel and join us for more captivating mythological tales. Until next time, stay curious and embrace the wisdom of Athena. Welcome. Welcome, my friends, to another enchanting episode of Two Minute Mythology. I'm Cleo, the muse of history and storytelling, and today we're diving headfirst into the world of love and beauty as we explore the captivating realm of Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love and desire. Aphrodite, born from the foaming sea, is a goddess like no other. Her beauty is unparalleled, and her powers are legendary. She has the ability to inspire love, desire, and passion in the hearts of mortals and immortals alike. Legend has it that Aphrodite was born when the titan Cronus castrated his father Uranus, and his severed genitals fell into the sea. From those sacred waters, Aphrodite emerged, radiant and alluring. Aphrodite's influence extends far and wide. She holds sway over romantic love, physical attraction, and even the harmonious bonds of marriage. Many seek her favor, for her blessings can bring about intense desire, deep connections, and the blossoming of true love. But Aphrodite's power is not without its complications. Her involvement in the affairs of mortals often leads to dramatic consequences, igniting conflicts and sparking rivalries. The Trojan War, for example, was set into motion by the rivalry between Aphrodite, Hera, and Athena, each vying for the golden apple of discord. Despite the chaos that sometimes surrounds her, Aphrodite's essence is that of love and beauty. She reminds us of the power and importance of love in our lives and the transformative force it can have. So, my friends, let us embrace the enchantment of Aphrodite's realm and allow her divine influence to guide us on our own journeys of love and self-discovery. May her radiant presence inspire us to find beauty in ourselves and in the world around us. Thank you for joining me on this captivating exploration of Aphrodite, the goddess of love. Who shall we delve into next? Leave a comment below and let me know. Welcome back to Two Minute Mythology. I'm Cleo, the muse of history and storytelling, 
and I'll be your guide as we dive into the thrilling world of Ares, the mighty god of war. Ares, known for his fierce and unyielding nature, embodies the chaos and violence of warfare in Greek mythology. He is the son of Zeus and Hera, making him a member of the formidable Olympian pantheon. With his trusty shield and spear in hand, Ares personifies the brutality and skill required in the art of war. He revels in the chaos and bloodshed of battle, always seeking the thrill of conflict. But Ares is more than just a belligerent deity. He embodies the honor and valor that warriors aspire to. His presence on the battlefield inspires soldiers to fight with unwavering determination and bravery. Although Ares can be unpredictable and hot-tempered, he is respected and feared by both mortals and gods alike. He is often called upon for his strategic counsel and guidance in times of war, but war is a double-edged sword, and Ares's domain is a reminder of its devastating consequences. He represents the destructive aspect of conflict, reminding us of the need for peace and diplomacy. In Greek mythology, Ares's presence can be felt in the epic battles of heroes and the triumphs of great armies. He serves as a reminder of the power of war and the enduring human fascination with it. So, whether we admire Ares for his unwavering bravery or caution against the destructive forces of war, his story remains an integral part of Greek mythology. That's all for today's episode of Two Minute Mythology. If you enjoyed learning about Ares, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know which mythological figure you'd like to explore next. And remember, we upload new videos every day at noon EST. Until then, stay curious and embrace the legends of the ancient world. See you next time. Welcome back to Two Minute Mythology. Today, we embark on a journey into the realm of Artemis, the fierce and independent goddess of the hunt and the moon. I'm Cleo, the muse of history and storytelling, and your guide through the captivating world of Greek mythology. Now, let's uncover the fascinating tales that surround Artemis, the mighty huntress. Artemis, the daughter of Zeus and Leto, was born on the island of Delos. From an early age, she displayed a profound connection with the wilderness and a deep love for the hunt. Artemis was known for her exceptional skill as an archer and her unwavering determination. She was often accompanied by a band of loyal nymphs known as the Hunters of Artemis. Artemis was not only the protector of the hunt, but also the guardian of young maidens. She valued her independence and vowed to remain unmarried, dedicating her life to her divine duties. Legend has it that Artemis played a pivotal role in various mythological stories. From her encounters with the hero Orion to her involvement in the tragic tale of Actaeon, Artemis left an indelible mark on the world of Greek mythology. Artemis was not just a goddess of the hunt and the moon. She embodied the ideals of purity, independence, and the untamed spirit of the wilderness. So whether you seek inspiration from her strength, her devotion to nature, or her unwavering spirit— the stories of Artemis will captivate your imagination and remind you of the power that lies within. Join us next time on Two Minute Mythology as we delve into more captivating tales from the rich world of Greek mythology. Who knows what wonders await us? Until then, remember to stay curious and let the stories unfold. See you soon. Welcome back to Two Minute Mythology, Today, we're diving into the world of Dionysus, the god of wine, revelry, and ecstasy. So grab a cup and get ready for a wild ride. Dionysus, also known as Bacchus, was the son of Zeus and the mortal princess Semele. His birth was anything but ordinary, as he was born from the thigh of Zeus after his mother's untimely demise. Talk about a unique entrance. Dionysus was the life of the party, known for his wild and extravagant celebrations. He taught humanity the art of winemaking, turning grapes into nectar that would transport them into a state of bliss and euphoria. It's no wonder he became the god of wine. But Dionysus was not just about wine and revelry. He represented the balance between ecstasy and madness, the fine line between joy and chaos. 
His followers, the Menads, were fierce and passionate, indulging in wild rituals and uninhibited dancing. Dionysus was also associated with the cycle of life and death. His transformative powers symbolized the eternal cycle of nature, where life emerges from decay and new beginnings arise from endings. He was the embodiment of the duality present in all things. So, whether you're raising a glass to celebrate life's joys or seeking inspiration in the depths of chaos, Dionysus reminds us to embrace the full spectrum of human experience. Cheers to Dionysus, the god who knows how to have a good time. Join us next time on Two Minute Mythology as we uncover more captivating tales from the ancient world. Who would you like to learn about next? Leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe for daily mythological adventures. See you soon. Welcome back to Two Minute Mythology. Today, we're going to dive into the fascinating world of Hermes, the swift and clever messenger of the gods. I'm Cleo, your guide to the realm of mythology, and I'll be unraveling the tales of this mischievous deity who holds a special place in Greek mythology. Hermes, often depicted with winged sandals and a herald's staff, was known for his exceptional speed and agility. He was the divine messenger, bridging the gap between gods and mortals, delivering important messages, and guiding souls to the underworld. But Hermes's talents extended far beyond just messenger duties. He was also the patron of travelers, merchants, and thieves. His quick thinking and cunning nature made him the god of boundaries and transitions, known to help those in need and protect travelers on their journeys. But perhaps one of the most intriguing aspects of Hermes is his mischievous side. He was known to be a trickster, pulling pranks and stirring up mischief among both gods and mortals. In addition to his wit and trickery, Hermes was also credited with inventing the lyre, a musical instrument, and was regarded as the patron of poetry and eloquence. So whether he was delivering messages, guiding travelers, or playing tricks, Hermes left an indelible mark on Greek mythology, embodying the qualities of speed, cunning, and versatility. That's all for today's exploration of Hermes. Join us for more captivating mythological tales on Two Minute Mythology. And remember, let us know in the comments which god or goddess you'd like to learn about next. See you soon! Welcome back to Two Minute Mythology. I'm Cleo, the muse of history and storytelling. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of Hephaestus, the Greek god of blacksmiths, craftsmen, and fire. Hephaestus was a master craftsman, known for his exceptional skill in forging weapons, armor, and intricate works of art. But his journey wasn't without its challenges. Legend has it that Hephaestus was born with a physical deformity, causing him to be considered ugly. This led to his mother, Hera, the queen of the gods, casting him out of Mount Olympus. Hephaestus found solace in his work on the island of Lemnos. He spent his days perfecting his craftsmanship and creating remarkable inventions. Meanwhile, on Mount Olympus, the gods and goddesses realized the value of Hephaestus's skills and compassionate nature. They knew that his creations could benefit them. As an enticement to bring Hephaestus back, the gods offered him Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, as his wife. The allure of Aphrodite's charms convinced Hephaestus to return to Olympus. And so, Hephaestus reclaimed his rightful place among the gods, his skills revered by all. His story reminds us that compassion, talent, and resilience can overcome any challenge. Thanks for joining me on this mythological journey. Who would you like to learn about next? Leave a comment below and remember to subscribe for more fascinating tales from Two Minute Mythology. See you next time.